This is something that I wrote for Facebook, but most of you don't follow me on Facebook and I don't blame you. So it's story time on my channel again. I'm just going to read you what I wrote. Radical acceptance. The first step to recovery from narcissistic abuse is radical acceptance. People often call me immature and I couldn't agree more. It's naive to believe that other people are just like me and naivete is immature. It is a form of projection. I project too. I project that other people are secure and confident with a basic solid foundation of core self-love, self-worth, and self-esteem that they don't waste time caring about what other people think of them or comparing themselves to other people because they are too busy focusing on themselves, that they have the freedom, luxury, and privilege to just show up authentically and naturally attract everything they want without having to manipulate that they prioritize their spiritual evolution, development, and growth, and have a vested interest in internally evolving, ascending, and becoming enlightened in order to become the best version of themselves, that they understand the first law of spirituality 101, karma, and that they do not allow themselves to experience jealousy because they know that jealousy is spiritual cancer akin to smoking 10 packs a day every day for 30 years. We all know Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. I spent 30 years consistently starting afresh with a clean slate, giving everyone the benefit of the doubt, turning a blind eye and sweeping everything under the rug. I didn't give second chances, I gave trillionth chances. Every time I expected situations and people to be different only to be blindsided by the same abusive bullshit I've experienced my entire life. That's not naive, that's just stupid. Not applying lessons learned, Claire. Take your head and knock some sense. There is no such thing as a healthy workplace. Healthy workplaces do not exist. Only homogenous workplaces do. If the president and CEO of a nonprofit for domestic and sexual violence is a functioning psychopath, there is truly no hope for us. These people are everywhere and they are running the show. The world is upside down, inside out, and backward. The system itself is inherently narcissistic. Every system, government, politics, criminal justice, the legal system, banking, finance, healthcare, education, academia, media, even the nonprofit world, all of it was designed by narcissists to encourage, promote, and reward narcissistic traits. Narcissists know better than anyone how to game the system because the system was created by people like them for them. It's time for the scales to fall from our eyes. Take off the Pollyanna rose-colored glasses. Let go of childish naivete. Wake up and smell the coffee. Evil exists in the world. If you don't believe in evil, it believes in you. There are a lot of people in this world who simply enjoy hurting other people. They are opportunistic predators who wake up every day and ask themselves, who can I kill today? They feed off of human pain and suffering. It is their narcissistic supply. We don't need to go down the rabbit hole and work out the psychology of their diseased brains. Hurt people hurt people. The why doesn't matter. The reality does. We cannot afford to be complacent. We cannot afford to get comfortable. We have to be hypervigilant. Be like Fox Mulder. Trust no one. Guilty until proven innocent. The one you love the most will always be the first to screw you. And so will the one who loves you the most. I think attitudes like that's just the way the world is and that's just how people are, are defeatist and fatalistic and people who actually think like that are the first to call me negative. Hope springs eternal. I was a true believer. I lived for almost 50 years actually believing in a better world where people could just be secure, have integrity and boundaries, not care about what other people think of them, not compare themselves to other people, focus on themselves, and never experience jealousy. I am not a bully, so I always believed there were other people with the capacity to be like me. There are not. This is the death of hope. It's difficult to live in despair. This is neither optimism nor pessimism, positive nor negative, it's just reality. Zero expectations. 
Narcissism expert Dr. Romani often talks about lowered expectations, but I think it should be zero expectations about other people and about life in general. It sure would be nice if people just naturally extended respect to one another, but they don't. People have free will and we can't control that. If someone does not want to respect you, that person has that right. No one owes you anything. I believe that all conflict in relationships arises out of an incongruence, a misalignment between the expectation and the reality. Drama is a three-year-old toddler throwing a temper tantrum because he didn't get what he wanted, which he never articulated directly in the first place because he doesn't have any verbal skills, because he doesn't have any empathy. People are not mind readers. Holding any kind of expectation at all is control and it's entitlement. It's also setting yourself up for disappointment. If you have zero expectations about other people, then you never get disappointed. If the monkeys do not fling their own poop at the walls, that is a good day in the workplace. I was also a true believer in the apocryphal American dream. I thought I could just get my education and then work, make money, and own property just like my father did. I thought the right to work in peace, to be paid the money I deserve for the good work I do, was a basic universal human right. My dreams were modest. I wanted a townhome, not a house, because I could keep it clean. No one cleans like I do. I wanted a private home because as an empath, I find apartments to be a living hell. And I wanted a car with a leather interior, not a luxury car, just not upholstered because upholstery smells bad. I never wanted a relationship. I hate traveling. I never eat out. I wouldn't be caught dead getting my nails done. And I don't want any luxuries like art or jewelry. But I am learning that even I am entitled to. Just as other people owe you nothing, you are not owed anything in this life. I am not owed a good life. And quite frankly, at this point, I think the universe doesn't want me to have one. I have resigned myself to a diminished, impoverished quality of life. It's very difficult to enjoy life when you can't get out of the lower levels of Maslow's hierarchy. I have come to the conclusion that this is just a karmic life cycle for me. I have Pluto directly conjunct my ascendant and a yod in my chart. I am here only to pay off karmic debt from whatever shit I did in past lifetimes as well as ancestral karma before returning home to my people wherever they are. I have South Node in Gemini. Maybe in a past life I was a basic bitch, a catty, trashy, ugly little pick-me mean girl who put down attractive women to feel better about herself. I incarnated like this to be on the receiving end of all the shit that I dished out. I think I got it. Given my upbringing, the fact that I am not homeless, on drugs, institutionalized, or incarcerated is an accomplishment. If you were abused as a child, you basically have a kick me sign on your back for the rest of your life. A narcissist can smell it from a mile away. They are sharks who smell blood in the water. All abusers are weak, lazy cowards and they like a nice, soft, easy target. They pick off the wounded animal at the edge of the herd. They have a sixth sense for selecting their victims. None of this is conscious. These people are not capable of thinking beyond their next meal. It's energetic. If you have low self-esteem and poor boundary function, you are already doing half their work for them. In your low self-esteem, you are not aware of how much you have to offer, but other people are. So you're going to attract opportunistic takers who feel entitled to take from you what you have failed to own yourself. If you throw away money, you attract thieves who are there to catch it. One of the reasons bullies bully is a narcissistic need for attention and they target people like me because it works. People like me are hardwired to laser focus on abusers, which is exactly what they want. We automatically cord to abusive people, which is just feeding them their supply in the form of energy. If I knew how to get rid of the kick me sign, my life would not be the shit show that it is. Not for lack of trying, I get an A for effort. I spent three decades trying on every hat, wearing every costume, and nothing ever worked. When I was 29, I discovered my first gray hair. I remember exactly where I was driving when I saw it in the mirror. I was ecstatic. I thought, now that there is evidence that I am not perfect, this shit will finally stop. Men will go away and leave me alone and bitches will get off my case. That was almost 20 years ago and I'm still being bullied. 
I disagree with the it gets better movement. It never gets better. I have resigned myself to the reality that I will always be a target for narcissistic abusers for the rest of my life. Boundaries. Anyone who was abused as a child is going to struggle with boundaries as an adult. All forms of abuse are a boundary violation. Narcissists have to violate your boundaries to get what they want. They are psychological rapists who refuse to take no for an answer. They are spoiled, entitled, three-year-old toddlers who want what they want when they want it. For some reason, every single time I have ever asserted a boundary in my life, I have been absolutely annihilated. Narcissists seem to think I was put on this earth for them. I must look like high supply. I'm not a model, actress, whatever. I am not a clown for your entertainment. Taylor Swift saying, you don't have to answer just because they asked you. Maybe I am not as good a person as I claim to be because I have absolutely no problem lying to people who are lying to me. Just as other people owe me nothing, I don't owe them anything either. Boundaries are the rules of engagement. Everyone has the right to set their own boundaries as they see fit, including me. I refuse to connect with people on an emotional or physical level. I'm an air sign. I connect intellectually. I like to exchange knowledge and information. And that's only a problem because I'm a woman. Just because I'm a woman, I am expected to be emotionally, physically, and sexually available to people. If a man wants to live life leading with his brain, no one has a problem with that. No one tells men they should really smile more because they would look so much prettier. No one calls men cold, serious, and uptight because they can't fuck them. Only a fool would approach me for an emotional engagement. I grew up in a family with absolutely no emotional language. I'm the queen of swords. You do not come to me to feel better. You come to me for the truth. I'm not your surrogate shrink, and I ain't nobody mama. I am not a perky girly cheerleader, nor do I aspire to be. Similarly, my body is off limits. The minute I hear one comment about my physical appearance, that's it, we're done. I just can't take it anymore. If I have to have one more conversation in my life about my fucking hair, I'm going to kill myself. Dr. Romani recommends the deep technique for dealing with narcissists. Do not defend, engage, explain, or personalize. And the biggest of these is do not engage. There is nothing I can do to control other people's opinion of or responses to me. So to attempt to do so is an exercise in futility and a waste of energy. If I am going to be bullied absolutely everywhere I go, at least I didn't waste any energy on anyone. It has gotten to the point that I refuse to engage with other people unless I absolutely have to. I interact with other people for one reason and one reason only, and that's money. Either they are paying me or I am paying for a product or service. Everyone else can categorically go fuck themselves. I no longer give to people who have absolutely nothing to offer me in return. I give nothing and I do not take in anything. Criticism or compliments, I stopped receiving invitations. Anyone who asserts boundaries, especially women, will be unpopular. The world is full of immature, insecure people who misinterpret boundaries as a rejection. There are also a lot of sick people who view boundaries as only a challenge. Narcissists believe that rules don't apply to them. And they are three-year-old toddlers who think rules were made to be broken, to get mommy's attention and unconditional love. Once you determine your boundaries, you have to be firm. If you start lowering that car window just a crack, these vultures will start dive bombing you in a feeding frenzy. But pick your poison. Which is less painful? Feeling disliked or feeling violated? Self-care. The opposite of narcissistic abuse is self-care. The abuse never stops, only your response to it does. Yes, pushing for laws against workplace bullying is a noble and virtuous goal, but change in this world is generational and incrementally slow. In the meantime, we have to pay rent. We are not going to get any laws addressing workplace bullying anytime soon. A better question is, what can you do so that it doesn't ruin your whole weekend? I no longer believe in healing. It's more about managing symptoms. 
Inappropriate symptom management includes self-avoiding and self-abandoning behaviors like drinking, smoking, substance and or pill abuse, self-mutilation, emotional eating, eating disorders, under or over-exercising, having sex with people you don't even like, let alone love, spending too much time on social media, gaming, or just having a duvet dive day and sleeping off the pain, all of which only exacerbates symptoms of CPTSD like depression, anxiety, sleep disturbances, digestive problems, fibromyalgia, agoraphobia, paranoia, flashbacks, nightmares, and ruminating. Been there, done that for decades. I used to joke that I could build a house out of just the corks from all the bottles of wine I drank. I hate superficial, new age, toxic positivity, but the truth is that it really is in our best interest to do whatever we can to keep our vibration high so that we are not a match for low vibrational negative energies. Healthier symptom management includes things like spending time with heart-centered people, meditating, you can find free guided meditations on YouTube, drinking plenty of quality water, healthy food, home-cooked, unprocessed, organic, preferably vegetarian or vegan, moderate exercise, yoga, tai chi, qigong, etc. Spending time in nature, you can literally hug a tree, just don't hug them at night, they're sleeping. Spending time with animals, journaling, listening to uplifting high vibrational music, meditations and or podcasts, etc. It is not possible to have a normal life. This is not Mr. Smith goes to Washington who got on a bus with his briefcase and his suit and tie to go work for a corporation in a skyscraper downtown and came home to his suicidal alcoholic trad wife with a beer and dinner ready on the table every day for 30 years. This is not Mr. Rogers who came home from work every day singing and changed into a cardigan. You cannot just get up, take a shower, come home, eat dinner, and go to bed. Daily routine isn't gonna cut it anymore. The work week is limited to 40 hours, less in some countries, so you are going to have to carve time in your schedule for self-care practices that cleanse your aura of negative energy, cleanse and align your chakras, restore your vibration, and fill you with light. Can you get up earlier to meditate? Can you meditate when you come home? Can you meditate and or take walks in nature on your lunch breaks? Again, you cannot afford to be complacent. You have to be vigilant and that includes about your spiritual practice. If I were actively working in a toxic environment, I would have all my coworkers on ice. I would buy several large pieces of black obsidian ASAP and keep them on my person at all times. And every day I would bathe with salt, smudge myself and my home with Palo Santo and do the lemon trick and an egg cleanse, as well as use both prayer and creative visualization to protect myself, cut cords and send all negative energy back where it came from. Return to sender. Self-care is not a one and done. It is not a band-aid. It's a practice and it may be something you need to do every day for the rest of your life. Personal agency. Again, the pursuit of justice is all well and good, but we are not going to get any laws anytime soon, probably not in my lifetime, and we have to work and pay rent. One of the steps of narcissistic abuse recovery is letting go of the need for justice. If you are a target of workplace bullying, you are basically the victim of a hit and run. If you were hit by a car, would you run down the street trying to chase after the driver, or would you turn around and tend to your own wounds? God sees everything, there is a higher justice, and as Taylor Swift said, karma is real. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. The car is gone. Leave other people to their karma. Keep calm and let karma carry on. Now what are you going to do about you? Again, what can you do so that it doesn't ruin your whole weekend? First, recognize it for exactly what it is. The contemporary workplace is effectively an adult daycare staffed by infants and toddlers with severe mental health issues, throwing temper tantrums because other people didn't read their minds and give them everything they want. If it helps, the next time someone is bullying you, visualize a screaming baby with a rattle and a pacifier. Imagine you are watching a show in a theater with a remote in your hand and the power to turn down the volume. Mute the bully. 
To cut the cord to this person, visualize a literal physical cord connecting you to this person and then hit it with a blowtorch. Or just blowtorch the person if you want to. Visualize whatever you want to have happen to them. I use a scene that I believe is out of the movie The Omen and I find it immensely satisfying. I have another vision that I've had for a long time. It's an animated scene from a video game of me running through a cemetery at night jumping over tombstones like hurdles. That's what my bullies are to me. Just corpses on my path for me to get out of my way. And recognize that some of these people might not even be people. I really believe there are all kinds of people walking around among us who actually are not human. It's giving demons, it's giving reptilians, it's giving vampires, whatever it is, it's not normal. You cannot engage with these people normally. These people are not like us, they don't think like us, they don't have the same values, and they don't speak the same language. English and Spanish. Most people, instead of putting in the hard work to cultivate positive qualities inside of themselves, expend all their energy on trying to make themselves look good by eliminating the competition. This whole culture is full of toxic garbage like it's a dog eat dog world, fight fire with fire, if you can't beat them, join them, and my personal favorite, you have to play the game. Listen to the music on the radio. I'm a savage. I slay. And if you cross me, I will cut you. In my country at least, competition is considered a good word. People actually brag by calling themselves competitive. Like that's a good thing. That is how these people think. Again, it's important not to go down the rabbit hole and obsessively try to work out the psychology of abusers, but it does help to understand how these people operate. Their intent is to provoke, to push your buttons, get under your skin and get a rise out of you so that when you react, you release emotional energy for them to feed off of as a source of supply. Narcissists want to influence, to know they have an effect on other people, good or bad, it doesn't matter, it makes no difference to them. So that they know they have significance and that they exist. They are the proverbial tree falling in the forest. So the most important thing is to never give these people what they want. Never let them see you sweat. The best response is no response. Gray rock, poker face, which means that we have to be emotionally shut down for nine hours a day. And it's not easy because though I never credited workplace bullies with any creativity, they can come up with some pretty spectacular stuff. But no matter what they throw at you, you give them only your smile. We are all learning to be Zen master Buddhist monks here. Fake it till you make it. You're on your own, kid. Most people, when they go through something in life, reach out. They find their tribe, they find a good partner, they create their chosen family, they find a good therapist or a support group, they find a faith and place of worship, whatever. They get the support they need and they carry on. Some of us, however, no longer have that luxury. If your family members gaslight you, your friends are dropping like flies, your love life is a shit show, your coworkers are shit stains, your therapist is useless, your psychiatrist gaslights you, your religion is a joke. If you feel as though you are getting doors slammed in your face, as though you are hitting a brick wall absolutely everywhere you go, the universe is very clearly asking you to go within to release all external crutches, attachments, and dependencies. Narcissist and codependent, it's two sides to the same coin. It's two sick people looking outside of themselves for what they want and need. For example, I wanted a cat for 20 years, but never could afford one. This year, I decided to finally just do it. I found the best cat in the whole entire world, and I just loved her to death. But after a month, I was allergic to her and had to rehome her. I am heartbroken and cannot stop crying. I have never known heartbreak like this in my life because I've never lost anything I actually loved. Even a cat 
the one thing that would make me happy in this life, the universe did not allow me to have because it was outside of myself. In my dysfunctional childhood family of origin, there was never a kind word. I never heard one single word of encouragement or positive validation about anything ever. The only feedback I ever received was when I did something wrong. I heard one parent, my father, say, I love you once. By then I was already 29 years old and by then it was too late. I know now it's about taking care of little Claire, about being the source of unconditional love for myself that no one else ever was or will be. We aren't special. It's just that the universe is asking some of us to do this in this lifetime. You are a frog in a pot and the universe is going to keep turning up the heat until you finally do what you set out to do when you chose to incarnate in this lifetime. Come home to yourself. I hope that helps. Take care.